My name is David Daniel Ball, and these are the headlines for Friday, 23rd of January, 2009. Obama signed Guantanamo death warrant, which is a really misleading headline. In fact, he's going to continue it, and he's going to release terrorists to the public, and he's doing some really terrible things. But one of the things he's not doing is signing a death warrant for any of the Guantanamo inmates. Rees demands loyalty from top labor ministers. Murder investigation leads to explosive stockpile. Aussie tourists arrested after Rome brawl. Student decapitated at Virginia Tech. Government should protect jobs, not property, says Malcolm Turnbull. Gone. All super savings since 2006 have been lost. New drug to revolutionize contraceptive pill. Aussies hooked on booze and whoring, says Cleric. Debt collectors chasing unpaid school fees. And MP Theo Theophanis in court to defend rape charges. In comments, New South Wales Labour to reward a backstabber, with Nathan Rees set to introduce former union heavyweight John Robertson to the New South Wales Labour Party. The legends of the once proud party must be turning in their graves, writes Alan Jones. Drown Town from Tim Blair. A beautiful coastal property for sale in Queensland. Note the shore's deadly proximity. However, don't let that stop you. Buy it before you're forced to. Don't bruise them. Islamic cleric Samir Abu Hamza explains the keys to a successful marriage. Mr. Hamza said Islamic law allowed men to hit their wives as a last resort, but they were not to make them bleed or become bruised. He said under Islamic law, as described in a Quranic verse, it was man's right to demand sex from his wife whenever he felt like it. If the husband was to ask her for a sexual relationship and she is preparing the bread on the stove, she must leave it and come and respond to her husband. She must respond, Mr. Hamza told his male followers on the video sermon. Mr. Hamza runs the Islamic Information and Services Network of Australasia on Sydney Road, Coburg, which offers spiritual advice, prayer facilities, and boxing, karate, and gym classes for Muslims. The traditional excuse follows. Coburg Mosque cleric Samir Abu Hamza has told a confidant his message has been taken out of context and that he was referring to hitting wives in a metaphorical sense. And an update? Reader Bill condemns Lebanese immigrants who make video speeches condoning rape and wife-beating. The least educated, most bigoted dregs able to muster the brain cells needed for computer usage, basic typing skills, and of course the fundamental ability to communicate in the English language. Ah, uh, no, wait. He's actually referring to commenters at this site. Too bad we're not a race. Then we could sue him. Cry freedom. With George W. Bush gone, it's safe for liberals to emerge from hiding and tell their horrible stories of repression. Victor Davis Hanson urges full disclosure. Please list, cite, name, just one instance from 2002 to 2008 in which you lost your freedom, or you were censored on the library internet, or you were followed around by the FBI, or your letter to the editor earned a wiretap, or even one instance of the loss of any freedom under Bush. And if so, just one example of how the election of Obama has once again restored your lost liberty. Nothing in the abstract, please. Something concrete. An example both real and personal. Speak up, frightened ones. Nobody will hurt you now. And shy winners. The first line in a report from the ABC Middle East correspondent Ben Knight. The political leader of Hamas has declared that his organization has won the recent war in the Gaza Strip. And the final line. The Hamas leadership is still in hiding. Some comments from yesterday. In all truth, I think Obama will not be judged on his actions until after he has failed as a president, possibly for the second term. The liberal press sustained the attack on President Bush for eight years over a phony gore failing to behave responsibly. In some ways, the problems the U.S. has experienced are directly related to Gore's divisive, wrong-headed stance. Let the healing begin is the cry used by Obama supporters, but they are still backstabbing and they are still snubbing. I think the words of Obama are frequently fine. I think his actions despicable. Sadly, I think Obama has failed already. The world just doesn't see it yet. 
from Sketch. Wow! Failed after one day as president. People like you, David, who hold the world from progressing, you sound like you are part of the problem as opposed to part of the solution in getting this world restored to some sort of peace. And from Greg. Oh, please! Gore behaving irresponsibly? Who backed down for the sake of the country when in reality he could have challenged the legitimacy of voting in Florida where Jeb Bush was governor? Bush always was, always will be our fraud of a president. Good riddance to him. From me, Sketch and Greg, glad to see you got a handle on what Obama means by change, means rhetoric and device as usual. Day one, and Obama's planning on talking with Hamas, change from Bush's position as Bush wouldn't negotiate with terrorists. Obama keeps the Gitmo inmates locked up and deprives them of a justice way out. Obama retakes the oath he flubbed the first time. Like Rudd, Obama has begun with empty rhetoric and broken promises. Michael Stipe replied, actually David, it was not Obama who flubbed his oath, it was the Chief Justice who recited one of the words in the wrong order. Check your facts. Michael, I checked my facts. Because Obama flubbed his lines, he needed to take the oath again so as to ensure the constitutionality of his presidency would not be challenged. Also, in update, Obama's not only denied the Gitmo inmates access to justice through the current arrangement, he has signed that Gitmo must close in a year. This means some of the inmates may be forced to return to some nations who have promised to execute them. Of course, some of the nations promised to release them too. It all sounds so promising.